fourth largest freshwater resource in Africa. 30 million people across five countries rely on the food and water resources the lake provides. People in Chad, Cameroon, Nigeria, Niger, and the Central African Republic utilize the lake for fresh water, fishing, and irrigation of agricultural and pastoral lands. The problem? Lake Chad has been shrinking rapidly for over 50 years, leaving communities desperate and fighting for water access. These communities have fallen victim to environmental injustice. They are bearing negative impacts of climate change, which they did not contribute to and are not equipped to handle. As the water depletes and their resource disappears, communities and individuals must migrate to other areas, areas occupied by other groups vying for access to the same resource. In desperate attempts to secure resources, conflict and unsustainable water use occur, unregulated by weak enforcement and unorganized institutions. As the lake shrinks away, new land is exposed that can be cultivated. Newly available land challenges border claims between nations. How these issues are handled and resolved are influenced by power dynamics and issues of procedural justice through exclusive decision-making and failed enforcement. At the roots of these issues are the unjust distribution of negative climate change impacts in the developing world. Since the 1960s, Lake Chad has shrunk to one-tenth of its original size, decreasing from 25,000 kilometers squared to 2,000 kilometers squared. In the past 100 years, the water level has fluctuated due to unpredictable rainfall variability exacerbated by climate change. As a result, the waters of Lake Chad no longer exist within the borders of some countries that continue to rely on its resources. The lake is shrinking due to a combination of climate change and human use of the resource. It is an example of the unequal distribution of negative impacts of climate change. The disappearing resource raises issues of distributive and procedural justice as they impact local communities across the Lake Chad Basin. Environmental injustice refers to the undue imposition of environmental burdens on innocent bystanders or communities that are not parties to the activities generating such burdens. This is a global environmental justice problem because climatic changes today are the product of greenhouse gas emitted by the developed world in the past 150 years. The Lake Chad Basin is a part of the developing world. The five nations surrounding it are relatively newly independent with unstable, weak centralized governments and poverty-stricken populations. The negative impacts of climate change are, however, often unequally and unfairly distributed throughout the developing world despite Africa being the least responsible for the global greenhouse emissions which cause global warming. These unwarranted negative impacts are an example of distributive injustice. The town of Baga in northeastern Nigeria suffers the impacts of this climate change. The population of the area is historically dependent on livelihood practices of fishing and agriculture. The door in Baga market was a center for fishermen to sell their fresh catches and support their families. As the borders of Lake Chad receded, many of these people lost their livelihoods, unable to easily access the lake's waters to provide food for the community and their families. Farmers attempted to employ unsustainable irrigation practices to salvage their crops, further hastening the depletion of the lake's waters. Now, the people of Doran Baga must travel for days by foot and boat in search of water resources. In doing so, they migrate onto the lands of other communities, vying for the same limited resources and causing conflict. Sharing Lake Chad between five countries with uneven political and economic power facilitates procedural injustices, especially when national and local agendas fail to meet eye to eye. Procedural justice, an important pillar of global environmental justice, refers to inclusive decision-making and effective policy enforcement. Taking a closer look at the land and water conflicts in Dirac, Cameroon, helps illustrate the processes and structures that perpetuate these injustices. Dirac is a region located 35 kilometers from the Nigerian border. As Lake Chad receded, huge areas of land became available for agriculture and irrigation. Nigerians have now lost all access to Lake Chad within their borders. Like in the village of Doran Baga, 
Nigerian fishermen have moved their families across the porous Cameroonian border to Dirac. During the 1990s, 30 villages were established to house over 7,000 Nigerians. Nigeria used protecting this new economic activity as justification for stationing troops in the region. Nigerian communities violate Cameroonian rights to the land and compete for the same resources, contributing to fish population and diversity loss. Cameroonians, desperate to save their livelihoods, have responded by using illegal irrigation to bring water to their fields. These communities are putting more and more pressure on Lake Chad, speeding up the shrinking, and increasing the tension between communities competing for the resource. The rational choice perspective explains why these communities prioritize their livelihoods over protecting the resource. Rational choice shows that rational actors operate under the constraints of resource scarcity, institutional limitations, and available information. These local communities are living within weak and disorganized states, conditions of resource scarcity, and a lack of understanding about why their resources are disappearing. They are making choices simply to survive, and as such, these choices lead to conflict with other communities in search of these vital resources and the unsustainable irrigation practices used by farmers and pastoralists in an attempt to keep their crops and livestock alive. Though the International Court of Justice ruled in 2004 that the contested land belongs to Cameroon, conflicts between the two groups persist. This is one of many cases where national governments have failed to involve local communities in decision-making. Despite the ICJ ruling, Nigerians still hold a 90% majority in this region and control the fish trade to Nigerian markets. There are institutions in place to combat these distributive injustices and devastating impacts on the communities surrounding Lake Chad. The Lake Chad Basin Commission is one of these institutions. It is composed of the five basin states, Nigeria, Chad, Cameroon, Niger, and the Central African Republic. Its role is to combat the impacts of the disappearing lake, settle disputes between the nations and regions over rights to the resource, and promote international cooperation to develop sustainable water projects for the future. However, the Commission has been mostly unsuccessful in its attempts. Lack of cooperation, lack of adequate funding, and lack of control over the local communities have inhibited the activities of the Commission and identify it as a component of the clearly flawed procedural justice structures in the region. The Lake Chad Basin Commission is undertaking a project to replenish the lake enough to maintain its current size. An alternative plan to replenish Lake Chad includes building a channel 100 to 150 kilometers long to divert water from the Obangi River in the Central African Republic, which separates the two Congos into Lake Chad. The Commission has invested $5 million in a feasibility assessment of this project, and their current objective is to gain international awareness and funding from the global community. Currently, it seems there is hope to maintain the size of the lake, though it is imperative that successful future projects are developed to support the millions of people whose livelihoods and very survival are threatened. If there is any hope of protecting the people of the Lake Chad Basin, the serious flaws of procedural justice in the region must be addressed.